for this introduction, I need to go to a note which was codified in market economics long ago at C.J. Lawrence. You had a headline, and then you had a subhead, and then you had a chart. And it was, of course, the discussion around the chart that led to the invention of modern market economics. And many people would say this began with Ed Hyman at C.J. Lawrence just a few years ago. Ed, let me get to your most recent note, coveted on Wall Street. Remember, folks, we protect the copyright of all of our guests. Get the Ed Hyman note through Evercore ISI. Ed Hyman, we're back in the old normal inflation range. Is it all clear on the Ed Hyman front for Jerome Powell? Well, I wouldn't say it's all clear, but it's pretty darn clear. <laughs> it's clear enough for them to continue to pursue the pause. Uh, whether they cut in March is a little early. They might you know, want to wait another meeting or two. Uh, but my strongest conviction is that inflation is slowing and will continue to slow. You have rents, wages, uh, but I don't want to overlook uh, that there are some prices that are going up like crazy. Uh, mm. But in, in general, I think that inflation uh, is coming down. And Tom, as you know, I have a, a, warm, spot, a warm spot in my heart for Milton Friedman. <laughs> and uh, money, money growth has slowed down, so I, I'm sort of following his Right. It is footsteps. Ed, I'm looking at shelter inflation as a part and parcel of the goofiness of OER. You've always ignored that. You've gone out for granular data and you feature mortgage rates coming down. Is the mortgage rates coming down from 8% say, is it a linear function or is there a tip point where home building becomes normal again? It, it seems to be a tip point somewhere a little bit above seven. Uh, mortgage rates were eight. Uh, maybe a little over eight, and now they're around seven. And all the information that we have uh, shows that housing has bounced back pretty nicely. Uh, even, Tom, we're getting a little bit of an improvement in rents, hmm. which surprises me. For three weeks, uh, we survey, the survey we've done of uh, apartment companies has picked up a little bit. Right. Mm -hmm. excuse, excuse me. <coughs> It's so, okay. Ed, we, we allow gasping on the yeah, show, Ed Hyman. Yeah. I'm gasping all the time. Even Lisa <laughs> gasps when it's okay. You know, hey, just have please. some tang and move on. Paul, hey, save us. Ed, talk to us about the labor market. I have been so amazed and surprised, pleasantly so, by the strength, the resilience of the U.S. labor market. How do you put that into context with everything else that's going on out there? Well, the economy is still pretty good. But I'm just, I'm just telling you what you just told me. It's pretty good because the labor market is still pretty good. Yep. Uh, in about 25 minutes, we'll get another reading for unemployment claims. But uh, unemployment claims are the government's best economic <laughs> indicator. And last week, uh, they fell below 200,000. It was just incredible how low they are. Uh, and so until the labor market eases up a little bit, uh, the Fed is going to be reluctant to cut rates. I think they'll be happy mm -hmm. to be pausing because inflation is coming down. Uh, now there are, I, I thought you were gonna say uh, that you've been surprised at how much wages have slowed given how strong labor markets are. Right. But there are some signs that the labor markets are easing up. For example, the Beige Book came out last week and like some others, it showed some easing in the labor markets and we survey employment agencies every week, uh, like a Manpower Inc. Yep. And and they and they have reported right. a clear uh, easing up in the labor market and in wages, and uh, a measure by Indeed, uh, labor market company, uh, right. has showed a wage tracker has come from five and a half down to three and a half. But there's a lot of signs that labor has eased, but not enough. Uh, I'm not, I guess, I guess I've been, I'm not sure shocked, but I've been surprised. But whatever it is, it's the key. Yep. You gotta get labor right. to ease up some, to get the economy to slow down more than it has. If you're now, just... employment increases have slowed from about 500,000 a month. They were in increasing 500,000 a month. And the past three months, they've been about 170. So. You know, it's like, you know, watching a, a frog 
cook in a pan. <laughs> they, they, they don't notice it, but I notice it. Uh, a and, wonderful and thought. <laughs> Ed Hyman yeah, with us right. here, Evercore ISI. We're going to continue. We are Thank commercial you. free. Don't don't go away, Ed. We are commercial free across this entire hour. Lucas Shaw to join us on the side of the economic data here. Uh, but on YouTube and on CarPlay, we're thrilled to bring you Ed Hyman this morning. Paul Sweeney? So, Ed, can we officially take... I don't know, for the remainder of 2024, can we take the recession talk off the table? I'm, I've had enough of this. How about you? <laughs> well, I probably have been uh, you know, giving you a problem on this, but I don't think so. Uh, I appreciate the question, and, and let me give you my best shot. Uh, so the yield curve has worked seven to six times in a row. Every time you've had a recession, the yield curve has been inverted. So I'm just saying that we've had extreme monetary tightening. Now, it's taken 18 months for that to work. So long that by the time you get to like month 14, all you and I want to say is like, get out of here. It's not <laughs> going to happen. It's different this time. Uh, but the yield curve inverted, for example, uh, in the summer of, of, of 06. Uh, and the recession didn't start until 08, right. 18 months later. So we still have another four months. I don't know if you can stand it. <laughs> right. But uh, I guess the main thing I'm trying to say from a practical point of view is that I think the economy is in a slowing pattern. I mentioned employment increase is slowing. And so I could continue to be part of uh, Tom's thought process. Our company surveys have slowed. Right. They were, we survey companies and zero to 150 is in the middle. Right. And uh, the, the, sur the surveys two years ago were 61. Right. And last week they were 49. Okay. And, and so, I want to I want to digress over to your wonderful page in your research note on China. And what Ed Hyman does, folks, and this is textbook Ed Hyman, is he looks at the equity market and all the media overwhelm of the Hang Seng Index, the Hong Kong Index, and the Shanghai Composite, and you bring it right over Ed Hyman to the decline in interest rates in China. Are they going to export a new low yield? Are they going to export disinflation wow. and deflation to the United States? Well, I was you got me there. I, I was going in a different direction, but let me explain. Uh, their yields, like you point out, uh, have been making new lows, and that helps explain why U.S. yields have been pretty quiet. It also, the, the weakness in China has ex helped explain why commodity prices have been weak. And it's been pretty clear to me that China has been exporting at least disinflation or slower inflation, and in some cases, deflation. There's a lot of news in the papers today about lithium prices, which are down 80 uh, percent. And so there's you're right. They're exporting either disinflation or deflation. But also, uh, if you go back to the George Soros reflexivity, which is that when something right. can't go on forever, it doesn't. <laughs> and there's a chance uh, that we've reached that point in China this week. Uh, with their cut in the triple R. And so the stock market right. there has rallied almost 10 percent. And this morning, uh, the price of oil, the WTI in the U.S., is up to about $46. It was in the low 40s. Uh, so, so anyway. So, Ed, I mean, you know, that kind of brings up a good point. I want to follow on Tom's question here. If we've got China slower than people anticipated if we've got europe weaker than people would like to see particularly germany i mean boy you see the the challenges there can the u.s be that decoupled from the rest of the world in being a growth marketplace when so much of the rest of the world is you know if not in recession darn close to it no you know, alan greenspan who enjoyed being inscrutable <laughs> but he also coined some pretty good thoughts, one of which in the late 90s was that the U.S. could not be an oasis of prosperity. And that's what we have now. I think you're correctly uh, pointing that out. And the data this morning out of Europe uh, is weak. We also survey companies that have sales in, weak in Europe. Mm -hmm. And that survey is about 32. Uh, the U.S. 
comparable survey as 49 to put right. it in perspective. And, and then over in China, our survey there is about 32. Uh, and so that gives the, the world economy you know, a soft inclination. But like I mentioned this morning, because uh, I live up right on the edge, uh, the, the news out of China is, is a little bit better. Uh, I mentioned right. oil prices have bounced up a little bit, and it's the, their right. stock market has bounced up a little bit. So I can't tell if, they're, if this triple R cut this week is the beginning of a real serious effort. Uh, they've had right. some false starts before, but it's, it's a move in the right direction. And we'll see right. if it bears fruit. And I mean, I want you to talk about one of the great fears. You hearken back to the 90s, and I'd even take it back to Mr. Isaacs in the 80s as well. In the zeitgeist of American global Wall Street, there is a real fear of our small banks linked in to bad real estate loans. Is it a legitimate fear? Is this something that we need to study, or is it noise? It's not noise. So every week uh, on Friday afternoon, I get the government data on bank deposits, and they are going down. They're down about 2 or 3%, which is the biggest drop since the 1930s, which is a sobering point by itself. So that gets back. You know, the bank deposits are essentially the money supply. It's 85% of the money supply. So it's, it, you got to watch it. This is my 13th Fed tightening cycle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm not, this is, I'm, I'm a, I'm a gnarled veteran right. of uh, <laughs> these cycles. And uh, right. every single one of them has had financial shocks or crises. And so the one we had earlier this year, or earlier last year, excuse me, uh, was uh, SVB and the small banks having a deposit running their deposits, uh, that was a shock crisis. And I think we're probably going to get another one before this is over. Okay. And I got but, one, uh, one last thought here uh, before we let you go. And this is with great respect for what, uh, folks, I can't say enough. And I understand Sweeney and McKee and Lisa are too young for this, but we used <laughs> to actually get printed research reports. And you would wait on Tuesday to get the C.J. Lawrence Green Book. And it would come out. It was Ed Hyman. And then a guy named Yed Yardeni picked it up. <laughs> Ed Hyman, do you have the Yardeni optimism that corporations will adapt that we will see a 10, a 15, a 20% lift in the Yardeni duration of stock prosperity in America, getting out to what, Dow 40,000, Dow 45,000? Do you share that optimism with uh, the gentleman from Yale University? I don't, but I like Ed Yardeni a lot. And I follow his work, I follow his thinking, uh, I respect him. Uh, when I left C.J. Lawrence, he replaced me. <laughs> I'm happy. So, you know, the world goes around. Uh, yeah. But uh, I, I really do uh, think about what he's thinking about. And it goes back to, you know, some thoughts about the 1930s. As I mentioned, uh, I think monetary tightening is extremely strong right now. Monetary tightening. And that keeps me away. At the moment... Uh, my view and our house view uh, is that the market's going up. Uh, and that's because inflation's coming down, the Fed's on pause, and the economy's still fine. Uh, but I would guess, uh, and Paul, you were needling me a little bit there on the <laughs> recession story, but I think the economy will get weaker, earnings will go down, right. and then it'll be a fight between declining earnings and the Fed cutting right. interest rates. Ed Hyman, thank you so much.